In this lesson, we're going to look at lipids and triglycerides. Much of this draws on what we've seen earlier with functional groups and organic compounds. So we're going to look at the basic features of both fatty acids and triglycerides. We're going to distinguish between saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. And then we're going to look at the bond that forms between the fatty acids and glycerol to form that triglyceride. So let's look first at fatty acids, which are the simpler of the molecules. And so when we look at fatty acids, which are the compounds that make up the lipids and triglycerides, what we see is that we have a functional group present in those fatty acids. What functional group is present in all three of these fatty acids? Hopefully the name fatty acids gave you a clue that it was a carboxylic acid and it's shown over here on the left side of each of the molecules. Remember that we show that as a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and an OH and sometimes we abbreviate that as COOH but they mean exactly the same thing. Now the different names of the fatty acids, the palmitic, oleic, and linoleic, have to do with the number of carbons and double bonds and you don't have to memorize any of the names. You just need to recognize that this is a fatty acid. So the only difference between a carboxylic acid and a fatty acid is that fatty acids have more carbon. So they're essentially a very long or very large carboxylic acid. So now we can look at an example of an unsaturated, in this case a monounsaturated fatty acid, because it has one double bond. Remember, what is the definition of saturated? So saturated means it has the maximum number of hydrogen atoms, so we're only going to have carbon-carbon single bonds. When we look at an unsaturated fatty acid, we're going to have one or more double or triple bonds. Typically, we're only going to see double bonds in our fatty acids. And so when we have a monounsaturated fatty acid, that means we have one point of unsaturation, so we have one double bond. When we have a polyunsaturated fatty acid, we have more than one double bond, so we have multiple spots where we see an alkene group. Now, you also hear about omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids in nutrition information, and what those reference is the position of that alkene, the position of that carbon-carbon double bond. We're not going to get into naming those, but I just wanted to give that as a reference point so when you see that, you understand what exactly that information is, is sharing with you. Now, we've already looked at condensation reactions and hydrolysis reactions, and we're going to talk about them both with respect to the triglycerides. And so we actually see that a condensation is used to form triglycerides. So what molecule do we lose in a condensation reaction? Hopefully you remember that that's water, so condensation is also called a dehydration reaction. We remove water to form that larger molecule, to condense those molecules together. When we form a triglyceride, we have the prefix tri, which means what? So tri means three, so we have one glycerol molecule, which is shown here on the left. Notice that it has three carbons and three OH groups. And then we have three fatty acids that are going to condense together to form our triglyceride. Notice that we're going to lose a water from each of these. So we lose an OH and an H, an OH and an H, an OH and an H. And we designate this as our prime, our double prime, and our triple prime. These can be the same R groups, but they don't have to be. And our R group is just a chain of carbon atoms, or hydrocarbon chain, so carbons and hydrogens. So now what we see happening is we've removed the waters, because this is a forming a triglyceride, so we have three condensations occurring. And what we see happening on our product is that we still have our three carbon chain with hydrogens that came from our glycerol molecule. And we see that we've removed a water, and the new bond that forms is between the carbon and the oxygen in each of these. Okay. So we have three new bonds that form which are represented here. So that's this bond, this bond, and this bond are all represented by the blue lines in both structures. So now we formed a triglyceride. What functional group do we have in each kind of um, fragment or tail of the triglyceride? 
So you may have noticed this also says it's a triester, and it is an ester group. Remember that an ester looks similar to a carboxylic acid, where we have the C double bond O, and we still have our O group, but now we have an R group or some chain of carbons. And that's what we see here in our molecule. So we have our C double bond O, and our O, there's the, the kind of uh, main part of that, and then we have some R group, which we have over here, attached to that oxygen, so attached to this oxygen here, that makes up our ester functional group. Remember, this R chain is just a hydrocarbon chain that's the rest of the fatty acid tail. The ester group is here with the C double bond O, O, C, and we see that there are three of those that occur in the triglyceride. Now we see the reverse happening when we look at hydrolysis. Because hydrolysis, we have water, so we're adding water here. Okay, so we're adding our water. And what does lysis mean? Lysis is to break apart, so we're going to add water and we're going to break this apart. Now we're doing the reverse of what we saw in the condensation reaction. We're, we're going to be breaking bonds, and so we're going to break the bond between the oxygen and the carbonyl, just like we looked at the hydrolysis when we were looking at other hydrolysis reactions, only now we have to do it three times, and we're adding three waters to do that. So now we have our carbonyl groups, and we're going to add the OH here is in red, so we're adding the OH to that, and then we're adding the H to the other half. So ultimately we end up with OH groups on both of our products of the hydrolysis. And we've gone back to forming, this is our glycerol molecule that we saw as a reactant in our um, condensation reaction, so this is glycerol, three carbons, Okay, and three o, an OH group attached to each of those carbons and the rest hydrogens. And so our condensation formed the triglyceride. Our hydrolysis breaks it apart. So we get our glycerol molecule here, which we see on the left side of our reactants. And then we get our left side of our product, excuse me. And then we see our three fatty acids. Notice that there's no difference in the tails of each of these fatty acids relative to what we saw in the triglyceride. So on the first one, we had a unsat or a saturated fatty acid, all single bonds. The number of carbons stays exactly the same. We have the same structure. On the second one, we see that our R group, our chain, our fatty acid tail, looks exactly the same in both as well as in the third one. So nothing changes in hydrolysis with the fatty acid tail. The only change that's occurring is we break the bond here between our carbonyl and our oxygen. Because we're never going to break the bond between a carbon and a carbon, we're only going to break it here between a carbonyl and an oxygen. And then we're going to add the H and the OH to either side, and we end up back with our glycerol and our three fatty acid tails. If all of these had identical fatty acid tails, then we would just have three of the same molecule. Because there's a difference in these triglycerides, we see three different fatty acids formed. Now we looked at phospholipids before when we were talking about cell membranes and what we see is the difference between a phospholipid and a lipid or triglyceride is that one of those fatty acid tails has been replaced by a phosphate group. So notice we've drawn this a little bit differently here but it's still the same structure. These are three carbons that originally came from the glycerol. Here's our two ester groups that attach to the fatty acid tails. We have one saturated because we have all single bonds. And we have a monounsaturated because we have one double bond. But we see that our third fatty acid tail is no longer there and it's been replaced by this phosphate group. So what we see is we have these hydrophobic tails. And the hydrophobic tails, remember, are nonpolar because fear of water means nonpolar. And then we have our hydrophilic head with the phosphate group because philic means, and therefore it's going to be attracted to water because hydrophilic substances love water, water is polar, therefore these are polar ends of the phospholipid. Remember that we looked at our cell membrane, we talked about the phospholipid bilayer where we had our polar sides on the outside of the cell membrane and we had the nonpolar tails or the hydrophobic tails on the inside. And so each layer had the, the um, fatty acid tails, and so we had our
polar sides and then in the middle we had the hydrophobic tails that were interacting with one another. So which of the following is produced in the hydrolysis of the lipid shown? So what we need to remember is that when we have hydrolysis, we're going to form two things. We're going to form the glycerol and we're going to form the fatty acid tails. So the first thing we look at is that we see the glycerol, which has three carbons, each of which has an OH group attached. And then we know that the remaining bonds are, are hydrogens. So remember, every carbon needs four bonds. So this is one of our products. The other product will be a fatty acid and or normally it would be three fatty acids but in this case all of our fatty acid tails are identical to one another. Notice they're all saturated, they all have single bonds, they all have the same number of carbon atoms. So instead of producing three different fatty acids we will in fact only produce three of one specific fatty acid. And so the structure of that fatty acid that we're going to see We'll have a carboxylic acid, because we see here's our, our uh, ester bond that we're breaking. We know we're going to have a carboxylic acid here, and then we're going to have one, two, three, four, five additional carbon atoms. Okay. For a total of six carbon atoms, we see they're all single bonds, so we don't need to place any bonds in the double bonds in the structure and then we can go back through and add in our hydrogen atoms because again every carbon needs four bonds and so we'll have enough hydrogens on each one to form that. Okay. Notice that when we broke this apart we didn't change anything about the structure of the tail. The only changes that happened, happened happened where we broke that ester bond. And we will actually put a three here because we form three of the same fatty acid molecule. 